Hello and thanks for staying with us on Africa Independent Television, AIT. Welcome to Democracy Today. It's just about 5 months, 17 weeks and 123 days to February 16, 2019 a day scheduled for the presidential election in Nigeria. Nigerians now know who their presidential candidates for the various political parties are. Why the major opposition People's Democratic Party is engaging in moves to woo more support to its fold. The ruling of Progressive Congress is mending broken fences arising from post-party primary controversies. Yes, today is 15th of October 2018. The office of the governor of Ikiti State is welcoming a new governor, Kayode Fayemi. And uh, record that uh, Fayoshe, who just left office today, was on this program in September when the Inspector General Police put him on checklists. Let's take an insert from uh, that interview. And I sent it to them in good faith as a sitting governor. Now you are writing the day, so if I want to travel now, I cannot go. Is that what you are saying? That's not good for the institution. Any of our colleagues keeping quiet today, because some are enjoying it, some are benefiting from it. Good luck to them. So for them to tell me, when I was coming now, I was passing through the airport. I saw one man, I didn't know it's not custom, but he was wearing something similar. I said, I'm here in case you want to arrest me so that I'm available here. I'm not one Nigerian. Did they, of, did they write to you that they want to arrest you? Uh, this is public knowledge. You, you, I mean, what they wrote, what is in the cast space is public knowledge. They didn't say arrest. They said they should put you on checklist so you don't no, leave no, the no. country. No, no, no. Read the body of the letter. You, you, you even said it when you were reading this just now, that they said they should arrest your fellowship. When a man says he's coming to you, do you need an arrest? And I wrote this letter so that there will be no... No drama. Can they arrest a sitting governor? Uh, well, not anything is possible in Nigeria. They froze my account, at least. They froze my account. I've but, gone through so much. But let's just leave that. What I'm saying is that if they do it, it will still be in, uh, in, uh, on the side of history for everybody. So let me put it clearly. I am still coming, as I've said, because the only time I can come, that was why I did not put on the 17th of October. You might say I want to run away on the 16th. It is possible that they will say you might even run away on the 15th before the... No, I can come the to the, I can arrive at EFCC midnight of 15th. Okay. That is the truth. I can come there. I'm not a man afraid of running away from anything. You understand? I'm not going to be the first person that will be charged. I've been charged before. I'm not going to be the first person to be charged. I'm not going to be the last. So why run away to where? And I want to say to you again, on the 19th of December, 2007, I gave up myself at the Lagos office. The records are there. So let us forget all these stories. If this is not political, very good. No. Well, that was Ayo Fayoshe in September. He was a guest on this program and he said, I will be there on the 15th midnight and today is 15th. The invitation is due tonight. This is our focus on the program tonight. I am Ijeoma Osamo. Welcome once again to Democracy Today. Well, we'll be taking a look at uh, what is happening today. What we have here is that the People's Democratic Party is alleging that um, uh, Governor Ayo Fayoshe is to be detained indefinitely by uh, the presidency. Let me just read a part of the statement that was issued by the National Publicity Secretary of the PDP. The statement says the People's Demo has raised alarm over alleged di directive by the presidency to detain the outgoing governor of Ikiti State, Ayo Dele Fayoshi, indefinitely. The National Publicity Secretary of the party, Kola Logbodinia, in a statement, said that the information at the party's disposal at all over the social media that is that the presidency had put the Economic and Financial Crimes Commission on alert to arrest the governor at midnight this Monday. Logbody also insisted that the alleged directive by the presidency is not unconnected with the plot to use the ESCC and other security agencies to incarcerate the governor, owing to the persistent criticism on President Muhammadu Buhari led government. He revealed that uh, Fire Shea's preparedness to defend himself in court of law and also said that neither the presidency nor EFCC is a court of law. 
Yes, this is our focus tonight, as I have with me in the studio, the former aviation minister and the, the former spokesman to the Jonathan campaign organization in 2014, Femi Fadi Kayode. Welcome to Democracy Good Today. evening. So you, you, you have seen what is actually happening. Mm. Why is Fayoshi or your party insisting that they want to hold this man indefinitely in detention? They just invited him. Well, I, I think that as to the why, I think that question should be put to the government, to the presidency and to the EFCC. Why do they do the things that they always seem to do? Why do they seek to intimidate people? Why do they abuse power? Why do they insult people? Why do they declare members of the opposition guilty even when a court of law has not declared them as being so? Why do they violate our human rights? Why do they violate our civil liberties? This is a question you need to put to them. And I feel very strongly about this, as millions of Nigerians do. And every single sitting governor, uh, former president, former head of state, Every legislator in this country and every prominent person and not so prominent person in this country should feel a sense of outrage about what is going on. Here you have a situation where a man has said, I will come to you at such and such a time on such and such a day. And I'm ready to come, I'm willing to come, and I've told the whole world I'm coming. He hasn't run away, he hasn't disappeared. And yet you are planning to surround his home at 12 midnight to pick him up from his house, cage him, and carry him away as if he was a common criminal. This is unacceptable. But, but, but that's an allegation. They, they have not said they, they will do that. Well, Your party is raising alarm. Have you ever heard of any security agency telling you what it is that they plan to really do? Do they, they never publicize their plans? Listen, I am a victim of this. They invited me to come on a particular Monday a couple of years ago. I said I'll be there. I wrote to them formally. They served me with a letter. On the Friday, they came to my house two days before and laid, you know, surrounded my home, laid siege to my home for eight hours, did not let anybody come in or anybody go out and said that I must come with them, even though I had acknowledged the invitation. So this type of information that the party has, and of course, they must, they must have had their own intelligence reports and so on and so forth. They must, you know, they don't just issue statements like that for fun. This is a very serious issue. And in any case, let us leave that aside for one minute. Let's go back in history a little bit. This is a sitting governor that was physically assaulted by men of the Nigerian police force. This is a sitting governor that had his accounts frozen. That is the government accounts frozen, uh, even though he was a sitting governor and he enjoyed immunity. This is a sitting governor whose own personal homes and members of his family were intimidated, threatened, and some even arrested, some of his assets seized by the same EFCC. And this is a sitting governor who had his state robbed from him, literally, when he, the whole place was besieged and Security agencies literally rigged the election in favor of the APC. Now, if they can do that, what on earth are they not capable of doing? Fire Shea is not a coward. He's like me. I am not a coward either. We cannot be intimidated by these people. Even if you lock him up indefinitely as they're threatening to do, let them do their worst. They're not God. I'm, I'm still wondering. I'm, Chief, Chief Fanny Kaudi, I'm still wondering. And if they lock him where, up where, indefinitely, where, he will come out one day. No, I'm still, I'm still wondering. Where, where did this information about locking fire shit? Let, let me put this to you. From. Because, listen, the problem is this with most of our people. We always assume things will not happen to us. It will happen to somebody else. And we have a good laugh about it. And this is something we need to stop doing. If there is an affront or a violation of the rights of any individual in this country or an abuse of power on one, even if it's the weakest in society, it affects every single one of us. And it's in that context that we must see this. It could be you tomorrow. It could be anybody tomorrow. It's in this context you must look at this. Now, a situation whereby you say, why is it? Look at the record of this government. Dasuki has been in detention for almost three years, even though courts have said he must be freed. This is a government that does this sort of thing. This is a government that went into the homes of judges in the middle of the night, bundled them into, into, into uh, to the SSS headquarters, raided their homes, you know, insulted them, and violated their civil liberties. Sitting judges. This is a government that does that sort of thing. This is a government that ignores court orders, that, that, that intimidates judges, that locks up and intimidates um, legislators, Senate president, and threatens to lock them up, seals up the Senate, Senate. So, are you now telling me that this sounds so far-fetched? But I make the point again. Whether they do that or not is neither here nor there. Nobody is running. The courts of law are there. The courts of law are watching. The whole world is watching. If you lock up Fayoshi and torture him and keep him there indefinitely, you may do so. Chief you may abuse power. Chief but I'll tell you what. No, no, but let me, please. But I'll tell you what. You will pay a heavy price for this at the end of the day simply because... God is watching and God is a God of justice. If you have a case against him, you know, go through due process. Prosecute him 
arrest him, detain him, prosecute him, release him when the time is due, if he's granted bail, don't ignore court orders. Let him go through that process. We have three arms of government in this country. The judiciary, the executive, and the legislature. Sometimes I wonder, and I have to say this, whether our president is that well-educated, to understand that there is a distinction between the three. He cannot be the judge. He cannot be the jury. He cannot Chief be the, Fanica, the legislature. Chief Fanica, and he cannot be Chief a Fanica, at the same time. Chief Fanica, at and they should stop Chief, pronouncing people Chief, as looters. Chief because they're not looters. No court has said so. And neither can you convict Fayoshi on television or the pages of newspapers or anybody else. You, you are sounding very aggrieved, because, maybe because you've been a victim of I'll, this. I'll uh, tell you. No, no, no. But Nigerians will ask you, yes. if this man is found guilty yes. and uh, they have evidence to prove that Fayoshi sure. should be invited yes. and to answer questions, yes. is there anything wrong Absolutely with that? Absolutely nothing wrong. And we're back to the same question. I have never said there's anything wrong with that. I have no problem with going to EFCC any day, any time to answer any question. That is what any responsible person ought to do. But they must also behave, and I'm talking about not just little EFCC, I'm talking about the whole government, from the presidency to the president himself and each and every one of them, the SSS, they must behave within the law. They must follow due process. You don't lock people up indefinitely. It has been done. You don't violate their rights. It has been done. You don't intimidate judges. It has been done. You you do not convict people on the pages of newspapers and pronounce them guilty before a court of law is done so. You are not a judge. These people should understand that there is a, there is the principle of separating of powers in this country and we will not accept this anymore. I don't feel particularly aggrieved because anything is possible with me. They've done all sorts to me. They've locked me up for 90 days. They've, they've violated my rights. They've humiliated me. They tortured me. They abused my family. They locked up my one-year-old son and my, and, my, and my young wife for five hours in a, in a bank in a kitty and they said that my child should not have any milk to drink for almost four or five hours. That, that's exactly why I said you're I, talking I, I, like an agreement. No, 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 man. no. Listen, listen. I don't p comment on these things publicly, officially, you know, of often. I only do so once in a while. And I've been coming to this program and talking and writing for a long time. I hardly talk about these things. I do not want this to happen to anybody else. Where you lock up a one-year-old child and a young lady for no reason, lay siege to a bank and say you're going to lock them up for no reason whatsoever. If they can do that to children they, and do that to young people that have nothing to do with politics, they can do it to anybody. And it's in that context I'm seeing this. And I'm sensing this obvious intention to violate Fire Shea's rights and humiliate him. And I'm sending a signal warning that the whole world is watching. If that were not the case, why is it that the minute that uh, he lost the election, or supposedly lost the election, the EFCC eagerly went and tweeted that you have a date with us at, 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 in but the that, near future. that tweet was pulled It doesn't matter. It was pulled it, it does not maybe, matter. Maybe I'm somebody sorry, who is uh, this, overzealous well, I sincerely it. hope that person was, was sacked. And I also, I also hold Magu directly responsible for that. He must take responsible and President uh, uh, Buhari for that nonsense that they did. Can I will let you land, but I, I need to ask this question yes. because Nigerians are also expecting you to, uh, to react to the question. If the government says the, their number one priority is to fight corruption, and if you look at what the reason why they invited Fayoshi is because of what happened. I'm taking you back to the tweets that you're talking about now. If that is the reason why Fayoshi is invited, is it not apt for him to go answer to the invitation? And people just stop this whole now, allegation of le let indefinite... Us, let uh, us not befudge the issues. He has never said, and neither have I or anybody else has ever said, that we are not prepared to answer questions. He's never said that. He's made it obvious, he's made it public, he's written to them on several occasions that he is coming. Why the hurry? Why the eagerness? I mean, they're behaving like a pit bull terrier foaming at the mouth, ready to tear the throat. No, no, I would, like, I would not like I'm such sorry, language. No, I, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm, like I'm to sorry say to say this, but that is precisely how I see it. You asked okay. me to come, allow me to answer the questions the way I wish to answer it, not the way you want me to answer it. Now, let me also say this. Just the other day, two days ago, Approximately two days ago, 50 prominent Nigerians, including my good self, was put on a watch list. I'll come back to that. We need to take a, a break here, okay. uh, Chief Fanika Ode. Uh, we have um, the track up, or can I call it a track up, or an in interview uh, by a correspondent this afternoon with uh, uh, the former governor of um, Yekiti State talking about uh, Ayodele Fayoshi. Let's see what he has to say. Well, um, it becomes very necessary to react to what is making the rounds in the social media and uh, the position on the party I have read 
In terms of the plans of the EFCC, despite my notification repeatedly that I will be coming to EFCC tomorrow the 16th of October because my tenure expires this night at about 12 midnight. Well, I heard that the EFCC is planning to invade my house and have me arrested tonight. Well, I'm all prepared. I will be expecting them. I won't be surprised at that action of theirs. It is their stock in trade. And I want to say a big thank you to Nigerians. And I want you to continue to follow. But I have made it very clear that I will be there on Tuesday, 1 o'clock, because my tenure expires midnight. So I don't know the, the desperation, the reasons behind that. And I call it here in good authority that the, study, the presidency says I should be incarcerated indefinitely. I received this with um, joy. I want to let them know that I am not one of the Nigerians that is afraid of that. Again, I want to tell them very expressly that this country belongs to all of us. We are not going to shy away from saying the truth. We are not going to be afraid of them. They came by due process. They came by free and fair process uh, electorally. They cannot intimidate us. They can't intimidate me. Remember, I've always said it, that my name is Peter Ayo Fayoshi, Peter the Rock. They won't get far. Be strong. These Egyptians you see today, you will see them no more. I want you all to continue to, to follow the events from tomorrow. Like I said, I will reiterate it again. I'm saying it again, that I will be there on Tuesday, the 16th of October. They have all the time in the last two and a half years, they claim to be investigating me, to have all the facts ready. And they have all the time in the last one month, or over one month that I've written to them, to have all the facts ready. The moment investigations are political, he could be anybody tomorrow. So remember, like I said, they won't get far. Locking us up, locking me up, no big deal. I am telling you, especially Nigerians, it is time to face tomorrow, and I'm prepared. No, Ayo Dele Fayoshi there uh, addressing a newsman this afternoon at his home. Uh, and uh, if you look at him, you will just wonder, is this the Fayoshi that two months ago can stand in front of a camera and scream? Fayoshi is looking so humble, wonderful. <laughs> He's looking so humble because of the invitation for tonight. Is that why <laughs> he has decided to appear this way? Well, my, my dear, is that what you call uh, humility or being humble? I call it the fact that he's pensive. And that's perfectly understandable. And he's on sober reflection. He is thinking about what is going to happen. He's prepared himself physically, spiritually, and in every other way, emotionally. And it is a very difficult thing that he's about to face. Uh, but it's no big deal. He has been through it before, just as many other Nigerians have been through it before. Others have lost their, lost their lives. Others have lost their loved ones, the lives of their lost ones, and uh, of their loved, loved ones. ones. And, um, and, and, and these are the sort of things that could happen to a human being. But God being so merciful, he's a healthy man, he's a strong man, and he's ready to face whatever it is they want to throw at him, knowing that this is a country that is governed by laws. And there are courts, and there are civil liberties and human rights, and there is a constitution which guarantees his rights. And most important of all, it's only a question of time. By February, we shall vote these people out of power. Uh, you will have a new government coming in, by the grace of God, very soon, under the leadership of Abu Bakr Tiku, and all this rubbish will stop. Uh, don't take that language. Well, I, listen I to me, and I, and I want to make a <laughs> fundamental point here. It is okay for people like Kayamu to speak rubbish on no, television no, no. stations Chief, Chief, this we morning not, and, call we not us, allow no, and call us looters. We will not allow well, let me, in let me, the same let me language this. on it's this program. It's comfortable for you to allow them we to call us allow, looters, we to call us thieves. It didn't happen here. Uh, well, it, it has happened happen all over the Nigerian media. But when we say that what they are saying is rubbish, they say this is wrong. Now, I, what is the, where is the logic behind that? Let's kill this once and for all. Um, uh, Hillary Clinton was on TV a few days ago talking about Donald Trump and the American election. And I'm a great fan of Donald Trump. But she criticized him and said, look, how do you expect us to be civil 
to those that seek to destroy our lives, destroy our country, and destroy our future. And when they call us all kinds of names, we are supposed to say, well, it's okay to do that. Now, that is the context under which I'm coming from. That's how I'm speaking. And I'll also tell you this. It could be you or, or the owner of this station tomorrow. And the owner of this station has also been subjected to this sort of thing, violation of human rights. Look at El Zak Zaki. He was shot in the eye. He was detained. He was locked. His wife was shot four times, and he has been in detention for the last two, three years. Nobody wants us to talk about that. Constantly, rights are being violated in this country. Constantly, people are being slaughtered, either by security agents. But, but two you, years ago, you feel one, aggrieved, one thousand, one, no, no, please, let me feels, just finish the flow, and then I'll let you come in. It, no, one Chief thousand Anikari. Shia Muslims were slaughtered in the Chief streets. Anikari. One thousand Whoever, I Shia think... Muslims were killed in the streets of, uh, of Kaduna. Um, almost two years ago. There's no outrage about that. 808 Christians were slaughtered on Christmas Day and Christmas Eve. We, we will not no take, outrage about that. We These are take facts, that. for goodness sake. Shall we not I talk about the, the facts? the court is still alive. Shall Whoever not, feels agreed right, can go to let court. Let me put it to you like this. Shall we not relay the facts? The not, not in the manner Why at not? which you These is human it. beings are being killed. Now, and you are saying, because of NBC, we shouldn't speak, then we won't come. It's a very simple thing. It's only a question of time. This Chief is a Anikari, democracy. Okay, this is a democracy. Let's, let's look at uh, the talk about the 50 Nigerians. And the minute the press, let's, let's the minute the the press is muzzled, the we have an even greater problem. And I think there's a fundamental Nobody's issue. Nobody's muzzling the press. I'm not saying you have been muzzled, but you and I know very well that the press has been come down on very hard not to allow certain things to be said by the opposition leaders. Because Meanwhile, we have, we have a, a, a regulatory body. All right, let me put it to you like this. And we have a law that covers Let me put it to you like this. Rather than for us to indulge in lectures about how to conduct interviews, it's a very simple thing. Whether anybody likes it or not, we have an election coming. Whether anybody wants to hear it or not on air or in the news, we will speak the truth about the atrocities being committed by this government. This man is about to go in tomorrow. Let us hope and pray they play it by the rules. We would all be very happy and we have nothing to fear. Mm. Let us hope and pray they do, not, they do not violate the rights of our candidate, Atiku. They do not lock him up. Let us hope and pray they do not violate the rights of any of our leaders. Are there allegations that he There are many allegations. I, I, have, I have listened to this morning. I listened to a television program when a spokesman for a presidential uh, 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 campaign organization by the name of Kayamu making the most outrageous allegations against our presidential candidate and this is nothing new they do it all the time when we defend ourselves we're told we're not allowed to speak but it, 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 it really doesn't matter the fact of the matter is this we're getting closer and closer to the D-Day when we will allow the Nigerian people to make a choice and that choice is between light and darkness between heaven and hell as I've said all before right, and, and I believe they'll make the let right me choice. Go, let me go to the, the issue that has been on the media for over 48 hours now the issue of the executive order there's this uh, belief that your name is one of those sure, that are stopped. Um, and I saw your Twitter handle that mm. you've never traveled out of this country sure. for the past eight years. Yes. So you, 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 that didn't start with the Buari administration. <laughs> well, let me explain that. I, I, I consider it a badge of honor that my name is on that list. If it wasn't on that list, I'd be very worried. You know why? Because this is a list of people that they seek to silence and suppress. And it really doesn't matter to me personally. Why is it that I haven't traveled for the last year? I have not been able to travel because I was prosecuted by the EFCC, as you well know, for seven years by the EFCC from 2008 right up until 2015. And I was a, a discharged and acquitted seven years later to the day. The minute after I was discharged and acquitted, by that time Buhari had come in, he immediately ordered the security agents to arrest me again uh, collect my passport, and I haven't seen my passport since. It's with the courts. It's either with the courts or the FCC. So this type of nonsense doesn't bother me at all. Not at all. So you're but not my, bothered that you're I am not. Problem. I've said it, and I'll say it on air. I don't give a damn. Now, the issue is this. For as long as they like, they can keep it. When God says it's time for them to go, and we have liberty and freedom again in this country, we will take it up, and we'll go. And they can't kill any of us. They all can't right. kill me. But let me also... Now, but I'm not concerned about me. I'm concerned about others. There are other people on that list who need to travel simply because they have medical issues or they have families abroad and so on and so forth. And it seems to me to be most unfair to say they shouldn't travel when a court of law has not pronounced them guilty of anything. Okay. And when traditionally, and uh, under the Constitution, it is only the courts that have the power to place a travel ban. On this order that you have spoken, Nigerians may be looking and laughing now, but let me just tell you the implications of this order. Chief, it, we have yeah. less than a minute to go. Okay. We have of about 15 seconds. Under this order, the EFCC or SSF or any agency has the right to go to your home, 
freeze up your bank account, collect your house, collect your cards, do everything, and hold them pending investigation or pending criminal criminal litigation. But and right, but yeah, that, right, and, and, and that and that is a violation of law. It is fascism and it's unacceptable. All right, uh, Chief Anika, I would also like to let you know that the presidency has said yet they did not release any list. They've denied that list that is being uh, peddled in the social media. Good for media. them. Let them that show us the list. They're the ones that said they have uh, a list. They should produce it. <laughs> and also, and to my friend Abba Kiari should really get it. We were in Cambridge together. I'm sure <laughs> that he should be allowing this sort of thing to happen. All he should right. be part of a government that does All this. All right. Thank you very much for being a part of the show. And this is where we say thank you for joining us on the show. Uh, do keep a date with us tomorrow by 7.30 p.m. You can go to our Twitter handle, Democracy Today. Follow us at that handle. Also follow me at my handle at EJ Osamu. Until we return tomorrow, good night.